Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining today's new CEO welcome call. Um, to it's on Wednesdays uh, at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time every week. I'm so excited you joined us and I'm so excited that you joined via One Hope. Um, it's such an exciting time for us and um, we're really excited to have you jumpstart your business. So a couple things that are super important that are probably already in your email box as a new CEO is we have three new emails, um, welcome emails, going to all new CEOs within their first three days. So you'll receive one email each day and it's just a really quick um, read and it points you in the right direction on how to really jumpstart your business. We have a new CEO welcome list. We have um, information on our fast start program and then a bunch of um, we have some new tra training calls as well coming your way um, hopefully in the next week or two um, for new CEOs we'll have a fourth email that comes out as well. Um, so really, I'm just going to go quickly over what the fast start is and then check out your email um, to see more details on the program. So our fast start is um, your first 60 days. So I always recommend that you mark down your first 30 days and your first 60 days. Yes, Chris. Yeah, how to videos. Um, so mark down your first, I actually 59 days, because you really don't want to bypass that 60th day so that you don't miss out on any points. Um, the goal here is to host six qualified events within your first 60 days. That's our Fast Start Award. And bring on new one new qualified recruit within your first 60 days. Um, so the parties need to be qualified parties which means that they sell, that you have $300 in retail sales for each party. Um, and so it's for every two qualified parties that you hold within your first 60 days, you earn $100 in Fast Start rewards points. There's no cap there. So if you hold 10 qualified parties in your first 60 days, you could qualify for $500 in Fast Start rewards points. Um, and then as I mentioned earlier, the um, for every recruit that you, every qualified recruit that you bring on within your first 60 days, you earn $100 in Fast Start rewards. And when I say qualified for a new CEO, it means that they hold two qualified events within their first 60 days. So if you have a new CEO that signs up on your day 59, they have their full 60 days to hold two qualified parties to count as a qualified recruit for you. Um, and as I said, there's more details in those welcome emails for Fast Start and then also under the Getting Started section of VIA University for quick reference. Um, and another thing that's really great is that you have signed up under an amazing mentor. So definitely reach out to your mentor um, and set up some time to talk to them. The goal is to talk to them for about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, definitely in your first week, for like maybe hold three to four calls with them within your first month so that you can really get to know the business and work on your goals with them. Make sure you set goals with them. And that's why we created the Fast Start program so that it's very easy for you to set your first set of goals for your first 60 days to get your business jump started. Um, and then let's see here. So while you're waiting for your starter kit, if you haven't received it yet, we have some great tips for you as well. Um, if you go into your back office in VIA University, we have some great tools under resources and then downloads and printables. Um, we have a calendar, it's called an open dates calendar, and we have a wine not list. Um, the wine not list is, really, is a really great tool for you to brainstorm on how on your contacts and I feel like once you start writing down a couple names you'll just really start to think about how how you know people different groups of friends and family um, maybe your daughter plays soccer or son plays soccer or basketball or something or ballet and um, you really just like start to think of all your contacts in those groups of people and that's what that why not list is for so you can keep track of them and really start to brainstorm and don't hesitate to talk to your upline leader about that um, so that they can help you brainstorm as well. 
Um, then we have something called an open dates calendar. This is where you would circle the dates that you have available to book tasting events. Always bring this um, with you to each party that you, that you hold so that you know exactly when people come up to you and say, I would really love to book a party with you. You have at least two dates set on your calendar to book out. You don't want to leave them hanging. You want to definitely set it up right then and there, um, especially if you're reaching out to people from your why not list. You want to have some dates available for them. Um, and then the next thing is we have um, such great training available in VIA University. I recommend going in and checking out the getting started section. That's really where you will um, be able to jumpstart your business and get a lot of training there. And um, you know, you will hear, we have a great tips from the top call every Thursday where you can hear tips from all of our top leaders. Um, and they've been doing the business for a long time and um, they all have some great tips to share with you. And speaking of, we have one of our seasoned leaders here today, Kendra Campbell. And um, I'd love to have her share with you some of her getting started tips. Not only did she jumpstart her business strong, obviously, but she also has trained many new CEOs. She has a great team, um, a very solid business. So um, Kendra, if you wanna take it away, uh, let's see here. Can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me? Or, yes. Okay. Hi guys, um, thank you so much for having me on here today. I'm gonna to apologize in advance if there's a cameo um, by my youngest daughter. It's her birthday today and she's less than happy that I had to get on the phone, oh. so if she pops in here. Tell her happy birthday, birthday from us. I will, she's four and I'm in major denial. I'm like, I can't even talk about it. Um, but thank you for having me. Um, I kind of wanted to give you guys the perspective of things that I learned by really not maximizing my jumpstart as much as I should have. So it's kind of like the things that I did wrong, I want you guys to learn from that. Um, number one, don't stress about all the stuff in the back office. We have a ton of training that Sabrina mentioned, so much training. And I had this mindset that I'm a mom, um, I was a middle school teacher, and now I'm selling wine, I have to learn every single thing there is to know about wine and about our company before I do anything. And that was mistake number one. <laughs> uh, I tell all of my new CEOs, don't worry about all of that training. It's going to be there whenever you have the time to get there. Really focus your first 60 days. And in particular, if you haven't even gotten your kit yet, your first week or two weeks, Really focus that time on sharing your business. Sabrina talked about making a big list. That's a list that you're gonna start now as a new CEO and myself, two and a half years into the business, I still have a working list that I'm constantly adding to. Um, it's natural when you think about hosting your launch tasting that you invite you know, your closest friends. So you invite you know, 10 or 12 people that you're really close with, they're gonna come, they're gonna support you. I want you to think larger than that, and I want you to think about different social circles that you have. The reason being is you're going to have this amazing launch tasting, people are going to come, and you're going to book your next tastings from your launch tasting. If you invite only, let's say, your work friends, you're going to be tapping into that same group of people over and over again. So think about your work friends. Think about your gym friends. Think about if you have children, you know, like um, Sabrina mentioned, you know, the soccer moms that you know, or your book club friends, church friends, um, neighbors, former coworkers. If you're married, your spouse's friends or their spouses. Like, really branch out. And I also tell all of my guests to bring a friend. So you're really trying to maximize that time and get in front of as many people as possible. And then so from that one launch tasting, you're able to book two, three, four, five tastings and really maximize your jumpstart or your fast start. Um, no matter what you want your business to look like, so you might have joined and you're thinking to yourself, I want to just have one tasting a month. 
that's awesome. You might have joined and you want to grow a massive business that makes you a full time income. That's awesome too. Whatever your goal is for your business, I really encourage everyone to really maximize this fast start. It's sort of like riding a bike, and the more momentum you have right now at the beginning, it's going to set you up for success no matter what you want your business to look like in three months, in six months, in a year. So really maximize those first 60 days. Um, don't reinvent the wheel. <laughs> you have an upline that has been with the company for some time and we have this amazing training that works. So do what your upline says and do what the training says and you will have success. Um, I try to think of new ways of doing things and it was just a waste of time. So don't reinvent the wheel. Um, I also wasted a lot of time before I started sharing the business opportunity because I thought, I'm brand new. How could I possibly bring somebody else into this business with me when I have no idea what I'm doing? <laughs> the reality is, is that you have an awesome upline and what she can do is train you and your potential new CEO at the same time. So I wish when I joined, I brought a couple of friends along with me right from the beginning. I spent three or four months before I really started sharing the business opportunity and I wish I could go back and change that. Um, I guarantee your upline is more than happy to train you and your new teammates at the same time. It's fantastic and it's so much more fun to start your business with a friend. So don't wait to share the business opportunity, especially now, especially now in April, where we have this great sign up special that, I don't know, some of you on here might have taken advantage of that. Share that. This business is so much fun. And right now is a time that we're growing so quickly. Like bring your friends along. Think of who you know, you know, as you're making this big list of people to host for you. Start thinking about who do you know that loves wine, that would love to do wine tastings? Who do you know that loves to give back and support nonprofits? They'd be great at this. Who's a busy mom that you know that would love a little extra income or would love to get out of the house a couple nights a week? Really start to think about who would be kind of your dream teammates and who would be really fun to work with and share that with people. Um, let's see, what else did I write down? Um, Sabrina also mentioned something that's really important is your calendar. I don't have my calendar here and if you saw it, you'd probably be like, what does this girl do? Because it's all color coded. But definitely circle your open dates in your calendar. I don't know if you guys are like me, but if, for example, if my husband says to me like, you know, let's go to dinner. Where do you want to go? And it's an open-ended question. I'm like, I don't know. And I can't make a decision. If he says, do you want Mexican or Italian? Like Italian, I can make that choice. So when you're talking to people and you're saying like, I'd love to do a tasting for you. Like what works for you? They're going to stare at you and be like, uh, I don't know. If you say to them, okay, I've got April 10th or I've got April 12th a lot easier to make a decision. Maybe that's just me, but I think a lot of us in general are the same way. It's easier when you're choosing between two dates. So have those dates circled in your calendar. And I, again, it's not just a new CEO thing. I've been in this business for two and a half years and every month I constantly circle my open date. So if I'm on the phone with someone, if I'm, you know, in my, in my car on the go, if I'm at my daughter's dance class, I can always just open it up and tell people when I'm free. Um, let's see. I feel like that's, those are like my big tips. I don't know if you guys have any questions or if I left anything out. I hope that was <laughs> helpful. I know I talk fast. I'm super caffeinated today. Um, but hopefully that was helpful. <laughs> yeah, we'll open it up to questions in just a minute. Um, yeah, Chris, thank you so much. Um, in just a couple minutes, we'll open it up to questions. Uh, feel free to write your questions in the chat box. And then once we open it up, you can definitely unmute yourself and um, uh, ask the questions live if you'd like. And um, one thing that I kind of glossed over a little bit, and I really want to make sure that this is one of our tips here, um, is that we have a great um, foundation called the Foundation of Four. And um, it's book try to book four tasting events in your first four weeks and four more tasting events booked um, in, in the next month. Try to have that. And then um, when you're thinking of your why not list, 
also try to think of four possible new recruits to share the opportunity with so that you'll have one new team member within your first 60 days. Mm -hmm. So definitely just make notes of those things as you're brainstorming, um, especially with your upline mentor. Um, so definitely, um, it's just a great opportunity to really start thinking of those fours because we have um, you know, such a great opportunity here uh, for all of our new CEOs. Um, so let's see here. So the call to action for today's uh, call is I want to see if everyone on today's call can book your first tasting. So I know some of you have your launch event um, on your calendar. So definitely, um, as Kendra said, don't hesitate to share the opportunity and really do your best to have possible bookings at your launch event talk to everyone about all the opportunities that we have booking a tasting event in other words fundraising for a local nonprofit um, and also the opportunity to create even a bigger impact by having a friend or family member join your team um, and definitely reach out to your upline mentor to get that um, coaching call set up so that they can really help you jumpstart your business and the, the last one, which some people may have already done it, um, is announce your business through social media um, or sh send an email or a text to your friends and family and let them know that you're, you're doing this business. And if you have your launch date, launch event started, put, have them, send them a quick save the date. Make sure they know they have it on their calendar and then you can send them um, either an evite or something along those lines um, once you officially have everything set up. Um, so definitely um, write down those um, call to actions and we will, I guess we'll go ahead and move over to questions. I see we have quite a few here. Um, let's see here. Sabrina, can I just say one more quick thing? Of course. Somebody mentioned to me last night, so I was talking to a new CEO um, and she, in her mind thought that she could only have one launch tasting like there was rules that she could only have one and i was like you could do as many tastings yourself as you want to and she was talking about how she has one group of like she's a stay-at-home mom and she has one group of stay-at-home mom friends and then another group of friends that work full-time that are available in evenings and so she decided to do kind of like a back-to-back -back launch so she's doing a friday night launch with her friend like gal friends that work during the day and then a daytime kind of brunch and bubbles launch like that kids are invited to for her stay at home mom friends. And that's totally fine. I thought that was a brilliant idea. If you've got these different pockets of friends with different yeah. schedules and you've got so many people like I know my house can't fit a ton of people. So I thought it was really smart that she decided to kind of break it up and do two different, you know, two different options for her friends. So that's another fun little tip to do, too. Okay, so then I love that tip, Kendra. Yeah. That was awesome. Isn't that fun? Like I, I yeah. and I just assumed like, oh, you can do as many as you want to, but how fun to tell your friends like you can come on a Friday night or you can come on a Sunday for brunch or whatever mm -hmm. times work for you. I thought it was really fun with everyone's busy lives and busy schedules and kids and spouses and jobs and other obligations. Yeah. I thought it was a really fun idea. And that's a great way to get your different social circles too. Yeah. Um Awesome. Okay, so the next thing is says, can you talk about doing wine tastings for someone who may be politically connected or faith based? What are the guidelines around these? So we're able to donate to all um, nonprofits, it just unfortunately can't be politically connected. Um, but everything else is good to go as long as they have a 501c3 number. So they are a nonprofit and um, they aren't politically affiliated. Um, so I hope that helps answer that question, Lisa. And then um, Tanya, is it best to focus on planning parties for the weekends? Um, well, that is a great time when um, a lot of people will be available um, for events. But one idea off the top of my head was um, if you have a friend that's a part of a book club, it'd be really fun to do a fundraiser tasting for a book club because 
I don't know about you, but my book club is kind of like a wine club. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of enjoying wine. Um, not me right now, but, um, you know, back when I could drink and future <laughs> I could drink. Um, so if you, if people want to book tastings on weeknights and you're available, do it. There's no reason not to. Um, it's just really a time um, weekends are really a time when people are more available. Um, but definitely tap into all your social circles. If you know someone that does a book club or um, gets together for happy hour, like offer to do an event with them uh, to fundraise for a, pro a nonprofit that that group would like to support. Yeah, there's different, I don't mean to cut to yep. jump in Sabrina, but yeah. there's definitely different and I think, I don't know, Tanya, I don't know if you have kids or not, or if a lot of like your connections have kids, but like I know in my town, like any of like the hockey moms, like if you wanted to do anything on the weekends, like that was like, they could never do anything because they were always at mm -hmm. hockey tournaments or whatever. So for them, like a Thursday night was perfect. If you're like, I have young kids, like I would love to get out on like a Wednesday night after they go to bed and like go to a wine tasting. So I think kind of number one, like look at your own schedule and see what works best for you and, and really stick to that. I think it's easy to just say like, oh, I'll do it whenever. And I, personally, I feel really important. Like look at your calendar and find what works for you, whether it's a Saturday night, a Sunday afternoon, a Tuesday night, whatever it is. And then, you know, it, it's going to vary, I think. And it also varies different times of the year. Um, I find around the holiday time, the weekends are so busy with family things that weeknights work best. Same thing in the summer. If people, I live in Massachusetts, so in the summer, everyone's going down to Cape Cod for the weekend. So like a Wednesday or a Thursday is awesome. Right now, weekends are great because it's the spring. People have soccer games or whatever in the morning, but the evenings are free. So it kind of, I think it varies depending on who you're talking to and who, who kind of that group is around, if that makes sense. Definitely. Thanks for sharing that, Kendra. Does anyone else have any questions for us? These are great questions, you guys. And Wednesdays are fun because it's like Wine Wednesday, Thirsty Thursday. You could have a fun little, mm -hmm. little theme if that's something you want to do. <laughs> that's awesome. Lisa, did you have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, it's kind of specific and it's something that I actually just ran into today. I opened um, an online party mm -hmm. And or a couple orders were placed and I was just looking at it in my back office and just so I get the wording right, I'm going to put it in front of me. Um, the retail value is $300 and then the commissionable value is 210 and I was just wondering if someone could explain to me the difference between the retail value and the commissionable value or why there would be a difference. Does that I'm not that, sure that's that report that you're looking at. Um, I, can sorry, I'm happy to jump in. Okay. I don't have an answer for you, Lisa, on what the commissionable value is, but I will tell you to ignore it. Okay. And I will tell you that you, you whatever the retail value is, mm -hmm. that is what you will earn your commission on. Okay. Again, I just wanted I to make tell sure. you what that number means, but I will yeah. tell you to just like pretend like it's not there. Right. It, it means nothing. I don't know where it comes from. I'm sure somebody somewhere knows what it is, but I don't know. <laughs> Kelly and Tracy, you're laughing. Am I right? Like, ignore that number. Okay. okay. They're not I just thank you, like Kendra. It. I wanted to say that as well, but I was like, I need to make sure I'm looking. We're looking at a report that you know, the same report. <laughs> you're looking at your activity page, Lisa. Yes, under okay. the party under the party portal. Yeah. Yeah. Right where you would enter the orders. Um, and it's got one order with the, with one retail value, and then the commissionable value was different. Right. And I thought, hey, if I hit my three hundred with just one order, that's great. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know the difference. <laughs> when you're looking at that page, Lisa, in the top right hand corner, there should be a number that says total retail something. Do you see that? Um, it should be in the top right. Of which page are you? That my activity page that you were oh. on that showed your orders. Okay, no, I'm in the party portal. Let me look okay. at activity. You might be looking at her okay. actual order where it shows the retail amount and then the amount that her cost is. Uh, is that possible? No. After I know the reports are kind of funky. And, um, but 
you're right on the my activity page in the upper right hand corner it does have the total commissionable retail so that's all i need and that number is correct yeah that's the number yeah. that you're going to get your commission off of okay yes. awesome thank you kendra you're welcome <laughs> does anyone else have any questions we're here to help you jumpstart your business if you have any questions like lisa or just general questions Okay, well, thank you so much for joining today's call. And um, I hope this was helpful. And um, we have tomorrow's tips from the top call with Chris, Chris Whitaker um, on at 1030 AM Pacific Standard Time on um, then the, the post sorry, well, the post will be uh, post the reminder post will be posted on the community page. And the recording from today's call will also be posted on the community page. So if you'd like to rewatch or um, have one of your teammates uh, watch it as well, definitely tag them in the post. And uh, we'll see you next week. Everyone have a great weekend. Thank Let you me so put much. in a quick plug. Oh. I want to put in a quick oh. plug. plug. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I just want to say thank you to Kendra for yeah. sharing the time with us today oh, and sharing welcome. those tips. She's out there and she's working this business. So she really does know what she's doing and she's a great leader sharing with all of you. Thanks, and I also just want to, you're welcome. I also just want to say that tomorrow you guys definitely want to tune in if you can because we have Kaz A lot who's going to do increasing your sales. Mm -hmm. So she will give you some tips on how you can, um, you know, sell in your tastings and um, maybe see some um, different results because as you're getting started, you may be going, oh, this isn't working for me. I don't have the right words to say. So Kaz is an expert. She was number one in um, selling in the month of March. So definitely a good one to tune into as well. So and Lisa, it's uh, 1030 AM Pacific Standard Time, same Zoom uh, link and same time uh, tomorrow. Yay. Thanks for letting me hijack, Sabrina. Of course. Oh my gosh, <laughs> thanks for joining. And thank you Joy, for joining everyone. And thank you, Kendra, so much. Thank you, guys. Um, everyone have a great weekend. Thank you. Happy Good luck. <laughs>